and um, what happened was the original was over 100 feet tall. It was up on the uh, island where the Haida, Haida Gwaii Indian tribe is, um, up off the coast of British Columbia, where the original was located. And it was said to be a sacred tree. It was um, supposedly contained the soul of a prince of the tribe who uh, had been turned into this tree. Uh, sort of like the salt story in the Bible. But they couldn't turn him into a tree instead of a pillar of salt. And um, so it was sacred. Well, they leased the land to a timber company, and they're in there harvesting logs and stuff. And they didn't touch this tree, but my friend was able to go back in with some forestry people, and they took some cuttings and they propagated them. This one of the cuttings that was propagated. And uh, some years later, somebody was protesting the logging of the islands, went in and cut the tree down. And uh, that's how I did the protest. Well, they managed to take the top of the tree where the youngest wood was and took cuttings and sent them off to the forestry station and they rooted a bunch of them. And so they've sent back trees and so there are trees scattered around up through the islands that were propagated from that tree after that guy cut it down. Uh, the guy who cut it down disappeared. Um, he was he was going a, they are. no not really because the way he disappeared he was kayaking across a bay to uh, uh, report to court they had a court hearing for appearance and his kayak and a boot washed up on the beach and so they figured he was out in the water and had an accident and he drowned and uh, so this this tree was sacred to the Haida tribe and I've been offering it for sale for quite a few years. I stopped selling it before I stopped doing the mail. It's carbon? Hide it, H A I D A. I did pronounce it Hide it. Yeah. It's a very good one. Yeah, it's called the, the Golden Spruce. You can find that in the group. What I did was I hybridized, well, back a little bit further. I found this golden sport on a weeping Norway spruce. I propagated it and got a plant call, which I call Gold Drift, which is a golden weeping Norway. And I showed you one up in front of the shed with that graft on top of it. That's one that I found. And there's another form called Acricona, which has cones on the ends of the branches. And I have one growing over here, a nice large one. Well, my Gold Drift one year had a pollen cone on it. I collected the pollen. I pollinated cones on the Acricona. I collected the seed and I grew 200 seedlings, and 28 of them were gold, which would have been from the gold drift. And then what I was trying for is a golden weeper that got red cones on the ends of the branches. This is what I got. There was 24 different plants in there, two of each, and they all grow different. Mm -hmm. And most of them get red cones on the ends of the branches. And so there's a real good lesson in genetics right there. So I got all these different growth rates. And I even got a miniature gold drift. So gold drift grows about this much a year when it's established. And I got one that grows identical to it. I call goldfinch and it grows this much a year. And the needles are smaller also. Do you know Bob Dunning? From Lake Wilderness Arboretum? Yeah. Yeah, his name is there. Yeah, he has some plants from it. Yeah, two reasons for Oh, people go over, Yeah, people go over there. 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 Yeah, people go over